Okay, welcome to the Streamsy community call for 7th April. And start with the open PRs and issues. It's a bunch of them sitting there for some time, so maybe we can have a look at them. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Tom, the first two are there sitting very long time without the change. I wonder if it's time to close them. The Kafka roller one um, is something that I'm now um, looking at with uh, Shobam. So um, it's not going to end up getting merged, but I'd like to leave it there um, just to refer to, uh, or at least in case he wants to refer to it at some point. I mean, I can close the PR and keep the branch, I guess. Yeah, as, as you want, but they were sitting there for a long time, so. Yeah. And the same applies to this one, I guess. OK, I, I must admit that they one, know. I don't remember exactly what that's trying to achieve at the moment, so I can they go. Know. Anyway, have a million of conflict. Yeah. OK. And then Leave similar. Yeah, similarly, there are these two QEPRs. Oh, wait. This one is from QE that's sitting there for quite a long time as well. But I don't see Marosh on the call, so I guess I will raise it with him offline. And I think someone else added this one. Yeah, I, I, I added this one. So actually, I wanted uh, the views from you all that whether we should create a new state named reconciliation pause in the rebalance state machine or you know, no, I mean, in the code. Because earlier, how the things were working that when we are in a reconciliation pause state, so if you check the logs, it will always show you that you are on new state and you are on new state, right? There was nothing like if you see the code, what it was doing was that if you have paused the reconciliation, it will move the state to new and then nothing happens in the pause state and it will keep showing that you are on the new state, new state, new state. So I guess that can be quite deceiving. So that's why what I was hoping to do with this PR was that maybe we should move the state to reconciliation paused, which means that we create a new state in the compute next status method. And there we can replicate the logic which we were using obviously previously. So this PR is doing that thing. Like instead of that's using pretty, the new state. It's yeah. a pretty small change. I think yeah uh, I, exactly. saw, I saw your comment Paolo about it um and yeah it, it's a point you, you, you know it, it would we're adding extra logic in um when we could just leave it in the new state but I think it, it, it this is just a kind of UI niceness is that people will yeah. basically just see that in the CR it's reconciliation pause so yeah, because I guess we are going to replicate kind of the same code that you have in the new state. Yeah, it, it moves. Yeah. it moves that if statement. The saying if reconciliation pause, you know, do the on new stuff, and it just puts it in the puts it in the update status class there, and just does it. So yeah, it's a few extra lines, but I think it's just a it's a UI nicety really. Okay, so just having a new condition in the in the status, right? To say reconciliation yeah. post as it happens today for the Kafka CR, for example. Yeah, and then when the pause comes off, it just shifts into new. The new. Does it does what it did before? Okay, so I will review again, and uh, yeah, that was my only comment. But uh, uh, I remember that in the past we we decided to not add the an additional um, state because the new was enough for that. But yeah, if uh, I agree that if it's about uh, more uh, uh, to be more UI friendly with users, uh, that could be useful. So I will back again on PR and see, uh, yeah, and maybe approve. Yeah, sure. 
थैंक्स Any other PRs anyone wants to discuss? If not, then we are over to proposals. I guess Sam, you edited, or someone else edited yes. to the agenda. Yes. That was me. Um, first up, I want to say thank you for everyone's reviews so far. Um, the main thing I'm looking to get out of today's call is a rough idea of how close we are to consensus that this is a sensible way forward and something that Strimsy would like to pursue. Um, I, think, I think the main point of possible disagreement is how flexible it is towards future change and how tightly coupled it is to um, Kafka itself using the topics, et cetera, and kind of where the ability to replace that would come from. But uh, yeah, as I say, the main thing I'm looking for is a sense from everybody, whether they're happy with the general direction or whether they think it's heading in the wrong way, heading the wrong way. Yeah, I don't know. To me, it seemed as a good solution as long as everything you want to do comes from the plugin itself. But I, I wonder the if there should be some better way how to be able to interact it from the outside to, for example, control it from the from the operator or or some other other resources based on some additional information, for example. From my point of view, that, that's uh, probably good to have, but I think that is something we should sort of iteratively move towards. Um, I mean, this this quota plugin has, you know, it has, it has got shortcomings, um, uh, you know, where it's, you know, it's based on cluster wide, uh, sorry, it's like sort of per broker. Um, yeah, it's it's per broker at the moment, and as 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 was rightly you know uh, found out you know what what caused this proposal to come about is that um, you know that works fine if everything's evenly distributed across your cluster, but if you have um, you know if you have uh, log log size skew, then uh, you could be taken out by replication traffic from someone who doesn't have um, uh, you know, uh, log skew going against them. So I think um, I understand, you know, you, you, there's, there's all sorts of uh, things that could, could be done here, you know, uh, you, you know, swap out sort of storage mechanisms and, and whatnot. But, it, you know, I think that's something we could iterate on um, as, as, as a need arises for. Uh, I, I feel like we, I, I just worry that we're like sort of planning for a future that might never come. Um, that's that's my my theory on it. Yeah, anyway, I don't think you can iterate if you go the wrong way in the first place. So I mean, nobody's asking that pluggability to be implemented as part of this proposal, but it should be a mechanism which supports that. And I don't see that happening with the with the closed loop Kafka topic communication. I think from my side, I kind of view the, I've described them in the PR as three roles. And I think that as long as the, the quota plugin itself interacts with those roles as interfaces, we can substitute out the Kafka topic as a implementation detail later for the operate, uh, API from the operator or some other microservice that monitors disk usage or something else and evolve that by swapping out the implementations of those interfaces. And I'm struggling to see the need to do anything more sophisticated than that now. I don't see as closing off options right now by doing, by having the three roles and clearly working to the interface. 
Um, but yeah, I, I do agree that Kafka, it's quite a tight loop between the component, the, the plugin and the brokers themselves. But I don't think we're closing off. I don't think this proposal is closing off later options to do something else. I think it supports that. Yeah, I mean, maybe in the future, we, you might want to add like an SPI or class path loading kind of, you know, semantics. But from, you know, last time I had looked at the interfaces seemed pretty, uh, you know, separated, separate, uh, separated um, from the actual implementation. So, I mean, I mean, uh, uh, Jakob, if you, if, you know, what are, what are the risks, you know, well, you've seen the current implementation, what, what risk of sort of, uh, lockdown DC, like. Well, that everything will have to be rewritten, everything will need to be reconfigured and so on, right? Uh, Not about pluggability per se, it's A, we don't want to maintain the things long-term if they are not the long-term feature, you don't want to force the users to change the configurations from version one to version two, because uh, we decided to change the direction. So that's why I think it needs to be thought through uh, properly. If you need something like that and how it should be done in the first place. Well, sorry guys, um, I have some yeah. drilling here, so I'm not sure I can, you can hear it through the mic or not, but. Well, we can't, don't worry. Maybe a way forward is to have, you know, to to make this sip about having a plugin for the plugin. And then it defaults to the existing implementation uh, as it's, you know, and then uh, the changes that Sam has are another plugin. I don't I don't know. Uh, how would you even, I don't know how you manage that and stuff, but you know what I mean? Because it's still some of the same core. I mean, it's kind of what Sam's separated out. You've got the, the thing that does this, the thing on the things that provide the interface that does the thing. Um, I mean, it could always you could you could tune the existing implementation into a plugin, the default plugin, and uh, the the you know Sam's uh, better. Well, I think it's better um, version as as a new plugin, and then people can stick with the old one if they like, and then if they want to upgrade to the new one, they can do that, and they change the configuration only for the new one. And then if someone wants to bring in something that's Prometheus based. Sorry, sorry Liam, I will stop you. I, I, it doesn't really sound like something that's feasible for maintenance and for long-term support. I, 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 don't, so, I don't understand, man, because you're talking about pluggability. I'm just saying the two existing behaviors could be plug in, plugged in. I mean, at the moment, like you've got the, the, the framework that runs, you know, has logic built into it, right? You could separate that out into the default plugin for the framework. I'm, I'm just saying it's uh, you can make it pluggable from the get go. It would work for the existing use case and uh, Sam's new use case. I, you know, this is this small part of the Strunzi project, but you already mentioned plugins of plugins of plugins of plugins. That's well, the issue, right? Like, oh, only because you, only because you talk about pluggability, Jakob. I'm, this... I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to meet you halfway here, man. I'm, I'm trying to find a way to meet your needs, you know, without, yeah. But at the same time, getting this, you know, because this, I do think this is an improvement. So, uh, I've, I've not had a chance to look um, at this since uh, Sam made some changes um, this morning. Um, but is, is this really sort of a conversation about compatibility with sort of what we've currently got versus this thing? Um, and if we had a way of ensuring that people's existing usage of the, the current plugin didn't break, then is the, um, would Jakob be sort of happy with the improvements, the feature set, I guess? of this new thing if there was compatibility because i noticed in the in the proposal there doesn't seem to be a section on compatibility i've only literally just sort of scrolled through it though so i might have missed it i haven't listed anything explicitly about compatibility but 
the consumed bytes policy is the backwards compatible ex the existing behavior i can call that out explicitly so um, the the same config would produce exactly the same behavior uh well that's a good question because that depends what we want to do because the existing behavior is broken i'd argue for multiple disks um so we can currently it will only apply throttling if you are consumed all of the available disk space not if you're running out of disk on a single volume now that could be behavior people want that but it doesn't seem very sensible to me because you'll lose parts of your cluster um, you'll lose topics and replicas etc so we can maintain that backwards compatibility or we can say that that's broken and not worth supporting and we can still support consumed bytes but we don't it doesn't make having it as a global value doesn't make a lot of sense in the face of multiple disks yeah no i, I understand the point about multiple disks um so i just just to clarify on my point i don't think it's necessarily issue if you break the compatibility now it was pretty much dysfunctional before it's nobody really cared that much about it being dysfunctional for a long time also we knew that uh, so whatever we now decided to improve it so we improve it but we shouldn't change everything completely every three months because we decided that we want to add a new feature right so the path we choose should be ideally something what we think that it's long-term solution and that we won't be changing the communication through Kafka to something completely else next time because we see some other needs. So it's not, I don't think, I'm not sure whether we can or cannot keep 100% backwards compatibility to what there's released today, but I don't think that's necessarily the, the main issue. That's why it's at the end version 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 or whatever, because yeah, things might change, right? But we should have some direction. That said, if everyone else is happy, I never said anywhere that I'm going to minus one this. So if everyone else is happy about what it proposed, then they should raise their voices. So can we just go back to what we were saying about a, a plugin to the plugin? Um, is that's about sort of separating the the policy from the actual quota mechanism? Is that yeah. right? I mean, I think, and I think, I mean, I haven't looked at it recently, and so please correct me if I'm wrong, Sam. But I think that's how Sam's written it. So you've got the the thing that checks the implementation of the, you know, the quota logic, and then applies it, and then you could, you know, if you wanted, you know, if you wanted to make it pluggable, you could just, just, you know, look up the 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 policy implementation via the you know class path or SPI or whatever. But you know, for the time being we wouldn't need to do that. But you know, you might want to switch them out, switch the implementation out. If people want to, you know, there's the existing behavior, then there's the new behavior. And then so you could still have the I mean that would make sure that you know ultimately backwards compatible, I guess. Like you have the um broker specific quota behavior that we have currently which doesn't have any backing topics and then you have this new one which you'd have to opt into the, yeah so I, I guess you know plugins is, is going a step further it's basically there's an implementation you can configure it you know the, you can configure it to use the new one if you want to use it uh, otherwise you can you know the old one is the default so, so let me let me ask a question which I might have answered before. I'm sorry if I have, and there's a really you know great answer that I've completely forgotten about. But can we not be reading the policy from a topic? Effectively, we are. That's what the proposal is trying to do. So, 
in the message, it describes the limit types and it says that this is min free bytes or consumed space or a min free percentage. And those are the different policies. The real bit where you, I see the pluggability mattering is your data transport. How do you get signals to or from the plugin and the data sort? Where do you gather your metrics from? The message itself conveys what policy you wish to apply. Now, there's an argument that the JSON scheme I wrote today was using an enum for those policies, and maybe that's a problem for extensibility and it should just be a string. But um, that's getting into the weeds somewhat of the conversation. Um, yeah, so the I guess I'm looking at the, the diagram. Thanks for adding that, by the way. I have, Personally, I do find that helpful. Um, and I'm just sort of looking at the the sort of the row where we've got the quota policy and then where we sort of come up with a quota factor supplier. And I'm sort of thinking, can we not just have a topic where it says, you know, broker A or broker B, this is the the quota to to use basically. And have that come in through a topic. And that would sort of separate out the policy from the mechanism of, of the quotering. Because all we actually need in this plugin is the mechanism of the quotering. It's just like, you know, how much am I limiting, you know, the the rate by? Yes. And yeah, the one thing that needs to be in the plugin is the factor, the quota factor that which effectively is, you know, your limiting percentage between zero and a hundred. Um, the, yeah, the policy, the policy could be externalized as well, I guess. Um, because you could then just put be... that in a, in something else that doesn't necessarily have to be then a, the quota plugin that can live somewhere else entirely. And it's a, a, a sort of a flexible mechanism for other policies in the future, which is, I think, sort of the point that Jakob's making, where we don't necessarily want to sort of build all of this into the quota plugin. Is that right, Jakob? Yeah, so what I think might be useful one day is ability to have some completely different component where someone or which on whatever mechanism decides to turn the knob and say, okay, now this should throttle the traffic to this extent or that extent, basically independently, for example, on the, on the actual disk usage based on some completely different information or decision mechanism. I think, the only reason I haven't gone down that line already is that it just was trying to keep the changes within the scope of the quota plugin, and then I would, to do and to do that kind of model, I, you would be rooting into the quota plugin to deliver the data, and then rooting back out to another topic to deliver it back to itself, which seemed needlessly complicated for what I was trying to achieve. Um, but I don't have a problem with it in principle. I don't see there's anything wrong with having a factor topic as well, just that it seemed unnecessarily complicated at this juncture. So, because at the, at the end of the day, you still have to have some, we still need something today to calculate what the quota factor should be and push it into the callback or provide it to the callback when requested or whatever. So I just, I, I think my only question is, is it worth adding that extra Kafka topic at this point? So I'm being silent because I'm hoping other people are going to chime in with some opinions about that. I was going to say, is it worth <clears throat> is it worth in the proposal is the thing that we're kind of missing in the proposal the sort of 
specifications of like what you've just said alternatives not in as much detail as we've got in the current proposal but do we need those pieces sort of written down with this is the advantage of this but like this is why we don't think this is the way to go so that then it's kind of easier to compare like what are the other options I was just looking to see what um alternatives have been listed in the proposal that have been sort of discounted is that the kind of missing piece of why we're struggling to kind of pick up a consensus because there are potentially other ways to achieve it that might feel like a big step now but would mean if we wanted to add it, it would make it more extensible later and maybe we just need to have those kind of described I, I think it's a fair point that it would be interesting to explore the avenue of are there other reasons you would want to um restrict or like quota people and it, for example, in the future, if we wanted to like click a switch and say, okay, now you're not allowed to access this anymore for some other reason, can you do that with that mechanism? Or are we making it so that it would be hard to add that scenario in future? And just kind of exploring like, are there other scenarios that could build on this implementation and which version of the proposal makes that easiest? Yeah, I think there absolutely are. Um you know, sort of buggy applications and clients is sort of one that springs to mind where you just got one particular thing that for whatever reason is exposing some bad behavior in the cluster and you just want a a mechanism of, um, yeah, limiting the amount of damage it can do. And Kafka itself doesn't sort of provide the ability to connect, uh, disconnect individual applications. So that's, I guess, one possible use case. I'm sure there are others as well. But that's just one that springs to mind. Does it not provide that use case? I I thought that was the call the interface the quarter callback interface provides a client ID. I guess it doesn't. What well, yeah yeah yeah. Well, you you can't disconnect configure the that. It's it's disconnection that I was sort of. Oh, okay, about. sorry. So yeah, yeah, you can you can rate limit them down to zero, and you know they're stuck then but you can't disconnect them yeah okay there's also no mechanism to enforce client ids if i remember correctly so you cannot deal with clients based on the client id i guess yes you're reliant on the principle to actually identify someone in a who, who's authenticated anyone can just you know um, borrow somebody else's client ID, if you like. I think it also goes down to the uh, user, uh, you know, assuming that you're using authenticated users, users then client IDs, am I right? I, think, I hope I'm right. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. You, yes. you can, it, it copes with both. Yeah, cool. Okay, uh, from my point of view, I guess what's a, what's a way forward? Like, because I think that what Sam's doing is is, is useful, um, a lot more useful than the current implementation anyway. But um, yeah, how do we move forward? I mean, does anyone have any rough sketches? Like Jakob, would you have a rough sketch of what you you know what your um, you know uh, not locked down version? would look like or you know because i think that would be helpful to sort of make forward progress right you know i i and i i do really think there's something we need to move forward on i mean you know rosec demonstrated that nicely the other day yeah i think this is something that we need to move forward on um and i i think sort of being able to separate out sort of where the the policy is from the mechanism for you know applying the policy um as we sort of described we talked in terms of sort of having a 
a separate topic but um I, I think if we could just do a little bit more thinking about that um then i would be personally you know quite happy if if we sort of went down that path and i realized you know you sort of just want to get cracking and you know implement it and get it merged um but Jakob's right that we sort of got to think about, you know, what the long term picture is. And given that, you know, I think we've identified that there are other use cases for flexible um, quotering. then I think exploring that a little bit more before we start. Um, yeah, sort of accepting the proposal sort of a little bit too early and writing code that then sort of locks in a particular sort of policy and use case into the the plugin in its current form would be a sensible okay. thing to do. Well, maybe maybe then uh, can we think of some example scenarios uh, where so you know um, um, you know based on Prometheus metrics a client quota. Is, is rattled down and then we've got this you know this disc one of sam's and then you've uh you know something like i don't know um i don't know i mean is that prometheus one kind of like a, real, a realistic uh, scenario that we want to support or i'm 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 i'm, 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 I'm yeah um, I think I, I think I saw that one mentioned once, but I'm just if, there, if there's any other scenarios that people uh, are thinking of that we want to, you know, make sure it's not too tied down to you know risks or whatever. Just before we follow up on Liam's request for use cases, which I second, is the consensus that we want to move the plug it the Strimsy plug it quota plugin away from just disk based monitoring. Because it's it is purely about restricting quota based on disk at the moment. This proposal is purely about restricting it based on disk usage still, and that's why this is relatively narrowly focused on that use case, as it seemed like a smaller evolution of the plugin. But is the consensus that we want to go for the bigger jump and move it to being a generic thing that we can just apply a quota? for any use case or any, a set of use cases we will elaborate, but are we moving it away from just being disk focused? Um, I guess that's asking me, but I'm kind of hoping that again, so the people will um, chime in, but I think, yeah, that is the logical consequence of, of of doing this, yeah. To be honest, I think there's a difference between writing a proposal which covers everything, whatever possibly might happen, and differ and, and, and something else is writing a proposal which makes sure that everything is future proof and extensible. And again, I don't think the proposal necessarily has to explain in detail how would Prometheus reader somehow control the metrics based on whatever. That's not necessarily the purpose to cover this because that's not needed today, right? But it's heavily changing the mechanism how the instances in the brokers communicate. And I think that needs to be pluggable. And I think it should explain how would you plug these things in the future if that is ever needed. But you do not necessarily need to provide examples. You do not necessarily need to provide implementations of that or, or anything like that. I think we just want the proposal to be something what isn't completely rewritten next week when someone else needs someone else, but what can be instead built on uh, on top of that. So uh, I think the part about the disk might be completely fine. It just needs better separation of the, of the thing which is limiting the stuff and the thing which is commanding the stuff so that you can replace it with another thing which is commanding it. For example, sending the commands from somewhere else. Okay, cool. 
I want. That, that's say, my view, at least, of course, not everyone might share it. Yeah, that, that makes a certain amount of sense to me. Um, and when you talk about pluggability, are you thinking, like, as Liam was alluding to, runtime configuration time selection of different implementations? Or would source time, you know, we build it with a Kafka backend, we build it with a Prometheus backend, we build it with a gRPC backend, meet your definition of pluggability? Um, so I think, I'm not sure I completely follow, but you are basically suggesting that the plugins communicate over Kafka topic or communicate somehow, right? So if yes. I now decide that I have this third party component running somewhere in different pod, how does this component tell the plugin to now throttle the traffic to this extent? Yeah, okay. I, I think I've got a much clearer picture of what you're thinking about. And, and again, for example, if it is that you have some, some topic where you are sending kind of the commands, what should the, the limiter do, then maybe it's enough to properly describe this and say, okay, the user doesn't have to configure the, the percentages and doesn't have to configure the reporter on the disk utilization, but just has sent his own messages into this topic and the limiter will read it, for example, right? And you do not, I don't think you necessarily need to go into more detail. If that would be, for example, the solution. Then it's, if we decide to now use gRPC instead of Kafka for communication, then it would be something like if one day in the future we will have some outside implementation, it would just connect through gRPC and send these commands, right? But you do not need to go, I think, into too much detail on that. Perfect. Yeah. We cool. just want to make, I mean, if it would be obvious that this can be done, then it doesn't need to be mentioned explicitly right but when i read it it didn't seem like this was something what could be done easily there with the design okay cool yeah on that note not necessarily now um i'd be keen to hear other people's use cases and what other sources they might have in mind or things like that for yeah. pushing commands into it. Mikhail might be able to uh, provide some interesting ones. He's not on the call today, but it might be worth just dropping him an email or something. And I would also like to stress out that the process is that the proposal basically needs to get about three plus one votes and no minus one votes and so on in the Apache style voting. So again, I would like to make it clear that I didn't minus one the proposal as it is. And if everyone else is happy with that, then uh, yeah, they should vote for it. Uh, it's not something I necessarily want to block or anything like that. Silent. I I... So are we done with this or, or do we have something more to this? I think that answers all my questions and gives me what I wanted to get out of the call. So thank you all very much. Thanks for all the, all the effort you put into it. Yeah, thank you. Okay, then I guess the next point on the agenda is the incubation. So over to Paolo. Yeah, so um, as I mentioned after the, the, um, the last community call two weeks ago, I was going to fork the, the TOC repo, the official one from CNCF uh, as a, my repo, right? And uh, opening a PR against uh, my own fork 
Uh, I did that. I shared the, the link here in the doc and even on the on the Slack channel uh, in the community on the mailing list, waiting for feedback. Uh, yeah, I got some feedback from you, Jacob. So thanks for that. Uh, I would like, yeah, because they are kind of uh, almost two weeks that it's opened. Uh, I would like to open this uh, the official PR maybe next week. So. Yeah, again, if people have some comments or uh, feedback on this uh, PR, uh, if you are able to review as soon as possible so that we can include your thoughts and then opening the official one to the TOC and moving forward with this, even because it will be yeah, a long way to to get maybe StreamZ accepted as an incubation project in CNCF. Uh, the only uh, open question that I guess uh, is still there after the Jakub uh, review is about um, uh, not mentioning uh, the, 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 the effort that we want to put even to, um, to have um, Kafka stretched cluster across Kubernetes. I remember that we had that in the first draft, Tom, and it's not in this one, uh, but I don't remember why it's not here. Maybe just a mistake when we uh, did some changes on the proposal. So I guess that it, it is the only point open on the review from Jakub and then, uh, yeah. Okay, I can look at that. So yeah, that's the, 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 the status, just waiting for feedback. But uh, if you are okay, if I don't get feedback uh, by, I don't know, the beginning of the next week, maybe Monday, Tuesday, we can set a kind of deadline. We can just open the official one and start the process. That's my feeling at least, even because yeah, people had a couple of weeks to, to review. I guess it would be good to make sure that at least the attending maintainers review it. Yeah. So I guess Tom saw it, but Jakub and Paul yeah, I will check it after the call. If you can have a look at it as well, that yeah. we are fine with it, because in a way, I guess we are all signed up under it. Yeah. And yeah, I will also update uh, more or less before opening the official one, the numbers about contributors and uh, stars and things like that, because maybe they are uh, updated right now. Uh, but that's something to do right before opening the official one. So leaving the maintainers aside, what would be the deadline? Well, in my mind was uh, the, the beginning of next week. So Monday try to end of, open end of business. Yeah. yeah, let's say Monday end of business. And uh, so that on Tuesday, I or Tom, anyway, we can open the PR to the CNCF DOC repo. Well, end of business is probably... End of day. The year. In what time zone? Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right. Okay, anything else to that? Then I guess survey is next. That's me, isn't it? Um, bear with me a moment. I think I got an email about this. Uh, it's in the queue. Um, so I've I've started the conversation with CNCF and they've started to look at it. Um, I think, and there there were some comments in the doc. That's what they've said, um, which I've not had a chance to look at yet, but it's progressing. Uh, 
Um, just, okay. Hang on, I might just be able to have a look at the comments. There might be something that we can talk about. There we go, thank you. Yeah, I think this definitely should have 24. Yeah, I agree. Let's add it. I guess this makes sense as well. Uh huh. And that's it, I guess. Yeah. Will you reply to them or should we do it right now? Um, let's just do it now. Okay, so we change this to 24, right? And this one, we just add a new point as other. Mm -hmm. If you do an other box, do you then want to have a like a text box for people to describe? I don't know if CNCF would sort that sort of formatting out, but do we want them to give some sort of info or do we just, would we then not read it? Because there's, Depends yeah, I mean that's often things, what happens it? is you get you get free text and then it's just like what do you do with it because everyone does something different or bizarre or whatever and it's just like well it's difficult to reason about it. I don't think we care. I think just other would be fine. So I guess I can resolve them and you make sure that they then continue with it. Ask the baton back. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Anything else to the survey? Then uh, I edit the next point. So uh, the drain cleaner now exists for some time. I know it has some users in the community. And I don't think there are any major complaints. So I wonder if we should proceed towards the 1.0 release. I think there are uh, two different things which I thought would be good or free to do before that. And apart from upgrading the dependencies before we do the release, uh, I think it would make sense to add support for the additional platforms for ARM and for Z, because right now it's only, only Intel. And I think we should remove the hard-coded certificates from the Kubernetes example files and have them more as a text guide because that seems to be triggering or kind of alerting tools and so on. Does that sound reasonable? Yeah, that's fine with me. Yeah, and with me. Yeah, same here. Okay, then next topic, if we have enough time for that, because that sounds complicated and lengthy, is the topic operator stuff. 
yeah i can i can give a very quick uh just heads up i just wanted to talk about it in case anybody had any uh opinions on it or could spot any issues with with what we were trying to do um so the topic operator relies on zookeeper watches to know when things change in topics zookeeper is going away so we need a way to uh, be alerted to topic changes when we're running in a craft cluster um obviously a better solution would be for kafka to natively provide a way to know when topics have changed in a, in a publicly accessible way it doesn't currently have that um one suggestion that me and tom came up with that I'm having a quick look at is whether we could provide a source connector that would connect to the raft quorum as an observer and would then be able to feed metadata changes to a publicly available topic with a public API that the topic operator could then connect to and other tools could connect to. So that's that's something I'm just having a quick look at the POC for. That wouldn't change the topic operator too much then because instead of the topic operator making this topic with the topic request in something in Kafka or in Kafka Connect would do it for it. Um, that might take a while. It, it could have all lumps and bumps, whether the upstream community might accept it or not. The advantage of it being a connector is, is that it sits outside of Kafka. So we wouldn't necessarily need the upstream community to agree to it, but obviously that would be better because we've got to agree on the schema for this, this public event topic. But anyway, so that's a long-term solution. Uh, the other solution obviously is to just poll the admin client. So I'm, I'm having a look at how much work is involved in this, this metadata connector um, for the next few days. And then we might also have a look at polling the admin client, but obviously that comes with its own performance um, question marks because hammering that and how long do we leave for the, for the gaps and things. So um, obviously this is a topic we could, have a, we could have a chat about, but if anybody's got opinions about these, uh, please let me know um, through, the, through the usual channels. When you talk about connector, you mean like Kafka Connect connector? Yes. So that would mean running it as part of the topic operator. Or whenever the topic operator is deployed, you'd have to deploy it. So there's, a, there's all kinds of questions around this, which is why I'm saying it. that's the long-term solution. And then we might have an interim one that's just polling the admin client. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to run and connect, but connect is a way to do these things automatically. So it seems like it would be a good idea to, to utilize that. Could you do it in the other direction of the, because you can get plugins, can't you, that run when topics get created or things like that. Could you have something that then tells something else rather than you having to poll so yes so the the well yeah the the poll I mean, i'm working on a on a, an improvement to some work tom bentley originally proposed about a more um powerful topic policy interface because at the minute we only have creation and then there's alter config but there's no mm -hmm. policy or anything triggered when you change the number of partitions or anything like that but this proposal right. we're making actually would on on everything that happens in a topic so yes if that was accepted then as part of well it wouldn't do it straight away but yeah we, you could conceivably signal something else at that point but this would be a way to make everything kafka native you know every all state in kafka is stored in kafka so it's a good idea though and um, presumably the other question which we could ask which might just be a no we don't want to consider that is given the changes and moving to craft might be like a big change anyway is it worth asking the question of do we still want the topic operator to be two-way right yes because that would be another solution the nuclear option mm -hmm. i mean I, I don't if it's not two-way I, I wonder what its utility is really other than maybe UI wise, there are users asking for it to not be two way. So, so I don't think the utility is the issue. I think the issue is that it's actually quite hard to implement when you cannot say that the CRs are the single source of truth and everything else is uh, is is deleted. 
which yeah. doesn't work with things like connect and streams and so on, right? But without it, it's quite hard to make it work. Yeah, I guess it's connect and streams that make it particularly difficult because otherwise you could kind of try and lock down some of the endpoints that allow you to create and manage topics and make it only accessible via the topic operator. But then things like streams and connect need to be able to create their topics. So how do you manage that? Yeah, and the, like it's, with connect, it's relatively easy because you have very good predictability of what it will create. And we have but a bit more like, control as well. Like streams is a complete mess because like understanding what topics will it actually create is fairly fairly complicated. Yeah, merge so. and shuffle topics are short-lived as well. So yeah, it's fun. Um, so anyway, we're, we're out of time, but um, by the next community meeting, hopefully I'll have a bit more information and maybe we can we can continue continue the conversation then. Okay. Two minutes left. Does anyone have any other points to raise? In that case, I guess, thanks everyone for coming and see you next time. Thanks folks. See you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, bye. bye.